All right, my name is Rollins Rivera from Cohesity. Yeah, I have my buddy. I'm Cody Hosterman from Pure Storage. And today we're going to talk about some of the things that are happening in the storage industry today, Cody. So obviously, uh, in the enterprise, there's a humongous growth in terms of data and the requirements that are needed to, to meet the demands of today's business, right? So there's a lot of things in terms of storage architectures. We both have uh, pretty innovative technologies in each one of the places we play into, primary storage, secondary storage. Uh, and in particular, some of the things that have been happening in the industry is that every, there's been a development of two different types of architecture. There's this sort of like enterprise type of architecture, and there's been this up and coming for some time now, these sort of cloud storage type of architecture. Yep. Um, now, obviously, the difference is enterprise readiness, uh, you know, uh, abstractions and interfaces and protocols that are accessible in cloud or, or things that are not available uh, in uh, enterprise, in particular when it comes to cloud. Right? So they want uh, file system services like NFS, SMB, S3, object. So the point is that we need to have, uh, to, in today's world, it's come to the point where you know, the cloud is a real thing. It's not that necessarily a place. It's that everyone is going to consume some form of piece of a cloud somewhere. Yep, whether but, it's on-premises or off. Absolutely. Right? So we have to be able to provide uh, sort of the best of both worlds, something that could be cloud-ready, but also uh, the value that it has in terms of the enterprise. And we have to find a way to do that in terms of the architectures that can do that and how we get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a big part of that is always on, right? And, and have no maintenance periods, right? When you're upgrading whether software or even hardware, right? If you want to move to a more powerful version of your platform, of the Flash Array M to the Flash Array X we recently announced, non-disruptive hardware upgrades and software upgrades right, allow you to have the agility and not have to plan maintenance windows while still maintaining the simplicity of your environment. And also, like, the whole thing about having to do forklift upgrades and things of that nature, just to go to a different tier or different type of performance level, or even to kind of expand from a, from a capacity perspective for either way. Now we have to provide, you know, larger capacities for multiple reasons. So that whole forklifting thing is really not a good deal. Exactly. Why do you need to move your data just to get a new version of the hardware? Correct. Right. There's no need for that. Right. So we're going to go over some of the things that we have in terms of our integration, somehow, uh, the different values that we bring to some of the things we've spoken here about in terms of scalability and, and how we bring actually the value of these architectures and how our, our, our products, our solutions actually come together to address the different needs of the market in terms of primary storage and in secondary storage architectures and how, how we actually play together in that particular space. Yep, absolutely. And this, where this all starts, right, is snapshots, right? Taking copies of your data for whatever reason. Right? On the flash array, we have 100% deduped, globally deduped snapshots, zero performance impact when they're created, Right? And they can create it instantly because they're just metadata copies, right? We just copy a little bit of metadata and you're ready to go, regardless to the size of the volume. Right. And so a, a common question my customers will give to me is like, all right, you've got these great snapshots. Do I need backup anymore? Do I need to, can I just use the underlying snapshots and be good to go? And I think it's a good question that you can answer for me, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> well, the reality is that, you know, when we maintain snapshots on primary storage, they're not always meant to be a data protection approach. They're meant to... If, you, if, if there's something that happens, you need to recover a patch on source and error test and dev, you have them very quickly there. It's particularly impure. They happen to be very fast uh, snapshots and, and perform very performant. In our case of being able to keep them for data retention, we're talking about longer retention periods. Now we're talking about, you know, maybe it could be weeks, month, or something like that, where you can actually offload these sort of uh, snapshots into a, a platform that can sustain them for a longer period of time without being exposed to the potential risk of an outage, of a power outage, or something that goes wrong where your disks where all your information is stored, primary and secondary, what, you, what you're pertaining or, or sustaining as a, as a backup, you know, in case something goes wrong, is not in the same platform, but you can bring it back and forth in the same way where things are tightly integrated, they're very useful, but the point is, you know, keeping snaps on, on, your, on your particular system has its use cases and its purpose, but it's not the way to do that when it comes to from a data protection perspective. Exactly. I mean, that's a particularly salient point, right, is that your backup should not be on the same storage as your primary data, right? Snapshots on the flash array are great for DevOps, right? Make, creating copies of large databases, moving them around, allowing engineers be able to create new data sets or copies of data sets really quickly and really efficiently and restoring to the original point so they can redo that test, right? But for actual full enterprise level backup, you need a secondary target. Absolutely. Now, some of the things that we do together very well is, like you mentioned, you have you know, really good space efficiency features on the primary storage array. And that complements some of the things that we do as well. Because, you know, for example, as you continue to grow data and, and run these applications that are very demanding, they continue to grow and they have the demand for running even 100% of uptime. What happens is that while you have space efficiency features in your primary storage, you know, you're going to sustain a lot, probably potentially even more capacity in a secondary system for protection. 
because maybe you need to retain data for longer periods of time where it's not always access, term hot, right? Things can actually go cold. But then in our case, we have the same sort of capability where we have globally deduped and, and compressed sort of space efficiency features that allow you to sustain the information that you have, which you can't, you come down to actually holding for longer periods of time, but also efficiently having that in this platform as well to kind of give you the best of both worlds in a primary and a secondary storage world. Absolutely. It's not just an architectural requirement yeah. often. It's also compliancy sometimes requirements around certain industries or, of course, governmental work, right, where you need to actually have these data sets split up, right? And so using some kind of offsite backup target like Cohesity yeah. um, is a great way of doing that. Well, some of the things that we do that are pretty nice in terms of uh, what we're doing today. So we've actually just launched our new sort of uh, release, Orion. And as part of that release, we announced our new file system architecture, which is what actually makes some of the magic that we do and how helps us differentiate us from some of the things that are in the market as well. So when you see here some of the architecture components that we have in play, so in terms of access, some of the things that we have is that we provide access to multiple protocols. So we have, obviously, NFS. We have SMB. We have S3. And as part of the access layer, we also introduce our data protection suite, which in this case, we're going to call it DP. So when we provide this sort of layer as part of our architecture, we can actually expose uh, different sort of storage abstractions that we can, can complement the storage system if it's needed. But one of, the other storage, uh, one of the other points is actually the data protection, where the point that we sort of uh, illustrate here and present is that we're not just backup. We can actually augment and help in some of the other capabilities that may be missing in the enterprise for some other reason. But this being able to sort of expose and present these different abstractions simultaneously is pretty powerful because it could be used in many ways for different things, whether it be from just a data protection perspective or can be probably utilize something that can be used by the primary storage system. Yep, absolutely, right. And, and utilizing the primary storage and going back and forth, there's a couple ways of doing this, right? With the flash array, we have fiber channel, iSCSI, right? But we also have a REST endpoint. Right, running on the flash array. Every flash array comes default with the REST API um, service running on both of the controllers, right? And also this iSCSI can be used for network access between Cohesity. Right. Some of the things that we can do actually here is with, as part of our um, snapshot integration, it comes into play. So when it comes to the data path, actually we utilize iSCSI to actually transfer the, actual, the, the data from this platform to this one. Some of the things that we actually do very effectively there. Uh, but we also able to use that in a way where it's very efficient. We have the ability now within our file system to provide QoS. So obviously some of the things that happen is that we have protection jobs that may be uh, test and dev jobs that may be running. So with this QoS policy capability we have within the actual system, we have the policies that allow you to do things simultaneously. So you can actually, through that integration, through using the, the different protocols that are available in the REST APIs, we can actually do uh, provide priority per, let's say, a protection job, a restore job, um, it could be a, we're running test and dev with some of those things. So you actually have these functions actually going simultaneously, but actually maintain some sort of level of performance in each one of those. And these are all really important points around enterprise class infrastructure, right? And the importance of having backup and proper procedures around it. And of course, the features that can underpin that, like non-disruptive software upgrades, non-disruptive hardware upgrades, simplicity, and of course, features like QoS. Very important. So in the next video, we're going to go over some of the details, some of the integrations, and some of the things that we do together very well to show you how this is technically achieved between Pure and Cohesity.